This is the Main Report, a public affairs program produced by the New England School of Communication. Welcome to the Main Report. I'm Jen Richardson. This is one of a series of editions focusing on nonprofit organizations in Central Maine. You'll hear about their mission, who they are serving, and their vision for the future. We'll be talking about the Robinson Ballet today. Our guest is Executive Director Stevie McGarry. Thank you for joining us, Stevie. Hi. Uh, so Robinson Ballet has been around for a while. Can you tell me about how it started? Yep. Uh, our artistic directors, uh, Ralph Robinson and his wife, Jean-Marie, uh, returned from Europe. They were in Switzerland and dancing in Europe, and they came back to Bangor and decided that they wanted to continue to dance and just started performing, got a group of dancers um, and started performing the Nutcracker and at basically any venue that would have them. <laughs> and they performed ballets um, all around the state and they went to Florida and they went to Greece and they, they toured there. Originally it was just a performance company, but I understand you have a school now as well. What has that change been like? It has been great. Uh, we've, all of our artistic directors and staff have always taught dance but we were never really in control of the school and how we wanted to run it. And so now we're able to do that and we're able to offer the kind of dance education that will prepare our dancers to perform with the company. And what is the age, age range of students that you have? We start classes with three-year-olds and I think our oldest student right now is 76. Oh, so wow. there's a big age range. <laughs> is it just ballet that you guys teach? Uh, we do teach ballet and we teach point classes on, on the toe and uh, partnering classes, but then we also teach tap, jazz, modern, and contemporary. Cool. Now I understand you have a couple outreach programs uh, like the Achieve program. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, the Achieve program is an outreach program that goes into public schools and we teach an hour-long dance class during the day. So whether it be during a gym class or the school will give up an ac academic class and have us in for a special. And what we do is we focus on self-esteem and building self-esteem in the kids where uh, if they take a healthy risk of taking a dance class, which is usually something they're not used to, um, that hopefully they'll be able to take healthy risks and succeed in the future in other endeavors. And I understand a lot of um, our programs are being cut in schools. Do you think that something like this will help bring that back into schools? We have been very lucky. Dance is sort of the ugly stepsister of all the art forms. You know, most schools have music and they have visual arts and very few have dance classes. So we are hopeful that our principals and our superintendents and the PTOs um, really value our program and they'll keep us in there and hopefully if they can see the value of the dance that they'll keep their music and their visual art or even bring in drama or more theater or any other art forms. How many students are affected by this program? The outreach program roughly hits about 600 kids a year. Wow. Uh, with everything that Robinson Ballet does for the company, um, for the community, how do you get funding for everything? We are a nonprofit, so a big um, economic uh, push for us is our annual fund. So we do a mailing um, to everybody that's on our mailing list, community members, businesses. We ask for donations. We also write grants, and we also have some funding from the school, um, the School of Robinson Ballet. That tuition kind of helps us keep things going. Um, and if people want to help out, what are some things that they can do to help your company? Um, well, we're always looking for volunteers, so we'll always take volunteers. Uh, financially, we go to our website and there's a Donate Now button and make a donation and that would help us out greatly. What are some things that people can do to volunteer? We have volunteers um, anywhere from coming in and helping us clean mirrors to uh, sewing costumes, mending costumes, um, and then at all of our shows we always have you know, ticket sales and people to hand out programs and usher seats. and kind of is a wide range. And I understand you guys have, um, you do a, for students that stay with you for a long time, um, what do you do to help them out? So students typically give um, a lot of their time to us, like every weekend, you know, for five years, <laughs> yeah, uh, rehearsing with us. And so when they graduate, 
co uh, high school and they intend to go to college, we offer a Ralph Robinson scholarship and um, it's anywhere up to $1,000 to go towards anything that they would need in college. So books, tuition, room and board, anything that they would need. Uh, what is it like to see students, um, you know, if they start at three or four years old, what is it like to watch them grow up? Well, I just had my first student who I started working with when she was five and she graduated graduated high school last year and it was <laughs> made me feel very old but <laughs> it was it's very fun to watch them grow and mature and you get to know them very well um, and so you're happy for their successes and their achievements and you look forward to following them throughout their college and beyond. So do you as an executive director and as the, uh, for students do they stay close? Do they form good bonds? Yeah, I have a lot of students that we keep in touch with email, um, you know, that have gone off to college. And uh, so we email, and now with Facebook, it's a lot easier to stay in touch. Um, and if they're in the area, then a lot of students will continue to dance with us. So That's awesome. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll hear about Stevie's personal connection with the ballet and about some of her favorite parts of being a part of this organization. Right, mi cariño. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandma's empanadas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix the beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika, the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw in the olive, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Hmm. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Want your education to look like this? Or this? <laughs> the New England School of Communications. Your passion, our experience, your future. Visit us online at nescom.edu. Welcome back to The Main Report. Today we're talking to Stevie McGarry, Executive Director of Robinson Ballet. Stevie, I understand you started at Robinson Ballet as a dancer. Can you tell me about your journey with them? Yeah, I started dancing with the company at like 10 years old. So I started doing the Nutcracker, um, like most students do, when I was 10. And I danced all the way through high school uh, with the ballet company. And then I did go out of state for college. But I kept in touch. Uh, I continued to choreograph uh, for the company while I was in college. And then when I graduated college, I decided to return to Maine and um, kind of said, I'm here, this is what I want to do. And they were very lucky to hire me as a teacher. And then uh, from there, I just stepped into the role of executive director. And how does your view, if at all, change from being a student to now being in a leadership role? Um, I don't know if my view of the company has changed. My that It's fun to watch the kids that are now starting who are 10 and remembering and not exactly what they're going through, but being able to relate to them and share stories and say, oh, you know, I because some of the, our costumes are still the same. They've held up. So it's like telling the kids, oh, I wore that when I was your part and I did that. And so it, it's fun to have that connection with them. Is it typical that people come back and teach after they are a dancer? Yeah, most dancers, no matter where they're from, end up, uh, they do their performance career and most unfortunately retire in their mid-30s and then uh, and teaching kind of uh, is a good segue to, to doing that. Now the holiday season is upon us and I know one of the biggest performances is the Nutcracker yeah. um, and that started a long time ago. Um, it started out small, right? Yeah, our first Nutcracker uh, had probably 15 dancers in it that uh, did every single role with multiple costume changes. And now um, our cast is around 50 dancers, um, and so it has grown quite a bit. Our touring um, has grown, so now we go to a bunch of different venues. We go to about four or five a year and we finish at the Collins Center with the Bangor Symphony Orchestra. 
Now I have some pictures from the Nutcracker performance a few years ago, as well as um, from the hashtag Dance Bangor project. Can you tell mm -hmm. me about that? Yeah, our um, we started a Dance Bangor hashtag just to kind of get the word out. Uh, people know about the Nutcracker, but they don't always realize that we do shows throughout the year. And so we wanted to show our dancers in our community. Um, and so we took uh, four dancers and we just went around downtown Bangor and took pictures of them uh, on the street or at Verve or in the rock and art shop and we just they kind of posed and we took their pictures and it was a fun day out cold but it was fun <laughs> I bet now does the community kind of embrace you guys yeah we had actually we went to a bunch of different businesses and did the pictures for dance Bangor um, and then a bunch of businesses came to us and were like how come you didn't come to us we wanted to you know so they um, they really took and rolled with that so we might do it again Oh, cool. I was going to ask if you guys were going to continue that this year. Yeah, I don't know if we'll do it this year. We might wait a little while and then do it again. What are some other performances that you guys do throughout the year? We do a show in the spring. Um, this year it's titled Dingo Lay, which means to dance freely and happily. Um, and that is a compilation of our artistic directors and myself and another guest choreographer and we kind of just do whatever we want choreographically. So if we have anything we want to say or any project we want to pursue, then we do that in that show. And we also do a children's matinee um, that is geared towards kids. And this year it's Aladdin. Last year we did the Jungle Book. Now if people want to come out and see you guys, where can they find the dates for your performances? Uh, www.robinsonballet.org is the best way that has all of our full calendar. Um, you can also call our studio or uh, find us on Facebook. Cool. Do you guys uh, do any other social media? I know you have the hashtag dance. Yeah, so we do Facebook, we're on Twitter, and we're on Instagram. Does that help bring in different crowds? Uh, yeah, I think everybody has, um, you know, there's Twitter people, there's Facebook people, there's people that do everything. Uh, so we probably get different uh, ages at different in each social media. And do you find that that brings in more teenagers or more adults finding you online? I think a lot more adults go through Facebook actually um, and sort of the 20 somethings follow us on Twitter and our teenagers are usually on Instagram. <laughs> right. Now we're running out of time but is there anything else you want people to know about your ballet? Just that we're open to the community and if anybody wants to take classes, uh, we offer classes for all abilities. If you've never danced, come on in and hang out with us. <laughs> Great. Well, that wraps up this edition of The Main Report. I'd like to thank Stevie for taking time out of her busy day to be here. I'm Jen Richardson. Thank you for watching. Not so bad.